Good morning, survivors, and welcome back to the long dark. We're picking up right about where we left off here at the Carter Hydro Energy Dam. So I did sleep here last night. It is now early in the morning, and we're going to continue looting this place. So someone mentioned in the comments that I can open up vents in the uh, air ducts, but not this one here. I don't know if that still works. I think that might have worked a long time ago. Um, but it's not working now. Another comment was, I missed the coffee. Yep, there it is. All right, we're batting 500 here, folks. Keep those comments coming. And the likes and the feedback, I very much appreciate it. So we have found the medical supplies for Jeremiah, the wounded trapper who is uh, dying back at his, his, uh, his cabin. So we got to get back to him before he expires. <laughs> Um, and we need to find the radio parts before we can even leave. I actually did try to leave, but we're locked in. Yeah, I wanted to go back to one of the trailers and um, and maybe do spend the night there and get a fire going. I think there was a I um, I can use this a wood stove. There we go. Bullets is, is, is good. Um, so yeah, we can't get out until we find the radio parts. The game will not let us leave. So let's find those radio parts. Actually, I do know where they are, or at least the general vicinity where they are. Apparently, they are upstairs where the medical supplies were discovered in the aid station. I guess I missed them. They're in plain sight, but it was dark, and it was late, and uh, Will was in a rush. So, we'll go back up there and check them out. But we still have a few things to look at here, because I did not do any looting after we had finished in the last episode. All I did was... Uh, Fix up some inventory items here. Fix up my clothes. I got the new cargo pants on. Check out Will. They're uh, not cargo. The work pants. They're really, really nice. Big patches on the knees. <laughs> so they're uh, they're much better than the um, than the cargo pants. Maybe not much better, but they're definitely definitely more waterproof, and that's going to help. They're on the outside. Oh, there's a frozen dude here. Oh, bullets. Yeah, we'll take them. Can't go wrong with bullets. Let's search this frozen corpse. This will come in handy. Yeah, another 303. Oh, two of them. Man, we got tons of ammo now, don't we? No, nope, wrong thing. Yeah, I gotta remember about these hotkeys. That's another comment. Uh, one is a light source. Two is a weapon. Three is... Oh! <laughs> Poop. Uh, and four is... Uh, what's four? For fire, starting fire. Okay. Gotta remember those. We don't have the gate key to get out of here. I don't think we get that for a while. I think the priority right now is to get those, uh, to get the radio parts and the medication back to, um, to Will. All right, put it down. Okay, so it cycles through when you hit that button again. Same button twice, cycles through. Gotcha. Okay, let's check these lockers. What have we got here? That one's empty. Could end up being useful. Two flare shells and another locked locker. Cured leather, I'll take it. Rifle cleaning kit! Woohoo! Yes! That's the one thing we wanted. Well, we want a lot of things. <laughs> but that is uh, that's spectacular because the gun is in horrible condition. It's under 50% now, so we might do a couple of cleanings before we head out of here. Man, I didn't check any of this stuff, did we? In the last episode. No, we kind of hustled through to find the, medic the medical supplies, but we ignored all the regular uh, looting routine here. I'm not even sure we need excellent. anything. Actually, yes, that is excellent. The soda could be good because we're running a little low on the drinks. Um, there's also some notes around here, apparently, that will start up... Oh, candy bar. A couple of quests. I think I picked them up. We'll have to check them out. They're side quests, just like supply cache. Kind of quest, nothing too important. Hope nobody needs this. Yeah, uh, sure, snatch him up. Got so much minimication. What is that? Mittens? I don't really need the mittens. Check the floor. Okay. Let's keep moving. Just gonna go left all the way around the world here. Could be missing more stuff. You know the routine, just let me know. Although, we're out of here today, so I don't know when I'm ever coming back here. Oh my gosh, a bunch of sodas in here I miss. Grab them. Grab them up. Anything else in there? No. Search the T-Rash. That'll come in handy. Eh. Eh. I have so many plugs already. I don't think I need that one. There's that candy bar. 
Uh, saltines are so salty. I don't want them. Oh, there's a note right there. Okay, crumpled note. That must be the one that uh, puts that cache on the map. Let's see. Crumpled note. Hastily scribbled note pointing out a hidden supply cache. Yeah, that's the one. The penmanship in this note suggests the author was in a hurry. I left it in the cave. Head back out from the dam. Follow the river. Look for a cave near a clearing with a hunter's blind. Yeah. Take it. There we go. That's what we were looking for. A cache right there. Oh, so we can follow the river back toward the Mystery Lake and then uh, head to camp office and then down to the trappers and try to find that cache. If we have time, it depends if on this is how any good to eat. long this is going to take. I bet it's pretty good, Will. You want it right now? You hungry? Trying to tell me something? Go ahead. Eat that chocolate bar. Can't wait to get that well-fed bonus back again. That thing was amazing. So, we need to find radio parts. Oh, I think I know where they are. But let's check these lockers first. We'll work our way over. Got to check the condition of this pry bar. What do we got Should here? To drink. More water and peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, we are stocked up. Sport vest. We don't need a sport vest. All right, the desks here had nothing in them, and I'm probably going to cut out some of this looting. I mean, how much do you guys really want to see? You know, I could have done this last night, and then... Uh, there must be something we can use to fix the short wave. You think so, Will? Yeah, look at all this. Here we go. Oh, radio parts. Woohoo! Grab them. Man, they're so teeny. Can they grab those, too? Oh, no, no, no. I guess I just need that one part. All right, very good. And we have some metal here and a new pry bar. Well, another pry I'm bar. I'm going to have to leave something behind. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. It's 100%. This one's at 75. We can just drop that. Drop it downstairs, maybe. I don't think we need two pry bars. And there's a drawer here. And a flare. We've got so many of those. And I guess I'll grab that. And we got matches and a soda. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was saying I'm probably going to cut out some of this looting. I know some people really enjoy all the looting, but it is um, takes a considerable amount of time. Is it food or? And I'm not sure how exciting it is. I think um, I think you guys would prefer to see what happens outdoors in the dangerous uh, Canadian wilderness, right? On the way back to the trappers. Oh wow, five rounds of ammo. Don't need the socks. So yeah, it depends on how long all this takes. A worn light shell. I don't think we're going to need that. I don't think that's as good as what we're already wearing. Oh, right. We got the um, <laughs> got the safe here, too. I forgot about the safe. Oh, dang it. It's going to take a whole bunch of time. Delicate work here. But I'm a professional. Oh, who I am. <laughs> there we go. And we're in. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Cash. Useless. Cash. Useless. Flare, rifle, ammo, five rounds, emergency stim, that's good. We got the medical supplies, we got the radio parts. Those two other priorities here, so let's go. Will is really heavy. I'm gonna have to uh, lighten the load. Something fierce, we'll do that right here with the cabinet. Uh, the locker, rather. Uh, oh boy, okay, let me do this real quick. And then we'll hit the road, so stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right. I think we're ready to rock and roll. I just dumped out a whole bunch of stuff. And now we are light. Not by much, but enough. <laughs> um, I would like to repair that gun, though. Let's see. Yeah, we're under 50%. Let's use our new cleaning kit and clean it. Yeah, it's not really repairing it. We're cleaning it. So that should prevent... Um, any jams? Well, maybe not. 52% is not great, but it's above 50. I feel like that's probably better than being less than 50. We'll leave the uh, the pelts and the guts right here. We'll come back this way eventually. I just don't want to get too heavy. So, all right, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go save the trapper. I better check in on that old trapper. I just said that. Will pay attention. We're gonna run it out because the sun is the sun's going down already, isn't it? Wow. Spent a whole day looting this place. We're going to run a little, and walk a little, run a little, walk a little. Let's make sure that bear's not around. I'll see him. All right, here we go. Close that gate so he doesn't sneak in after us. 
and we're just going to go for it. It's a straight shot. Well, not straight, but we just have to follow tracks. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we're not going to go down the river. Ooh, new location, train bridge, because we didn't go over the bridge last time. Around it. But yeah, I know that cache is over there. It's just not worth going after right now. It's such a beautiful day, too. Look at this. Nice and, nice and warm today. No wind, no snow. I don't see any wolvesies. So I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna head back. And if anything exciting happens, I'll let you guys know. I think we've got plenty of time. We do have some meat in case we have to drop it if we get stalked. But as we witnessed in the previous episode, these wolves don't seem interested in the hunt. They just want to go right for the jugular, man. They come right at you. So I'll keep my eyes open for them. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. See how far we can get without anything too exciting <laughs> or scary happening. I am going to have another soda, though. The more we drink right now, the less we have to carry, right? It's funny how that works. All right. Let's go. All right. We're at camp office right there on Mystery Lake. So far, so good. It was a very uneventful trip. So far, I did hear a pack of wolves, but they were kind of far off in the distance in the woods over there. I'm sure they were frolicking, chasing bunny wabbits or something. But other than that, it's been been kind of quiet. Which is a little eerie, honestly. I don't like quiet. I wonder if we should cut through here. This is a bit of a shortcut. Uh, yeah. I don't like taking shortcuts. <laughs> they usually turn into very long cuts. But it will shave some time off this trip. But we gotta get back to Jerry. You gotta save his life. Deadfall area. We're at the Deadfall area. Yeah, obviously we can't really get lost in this story mode because <laughs> the map shows us our precise location and our heading. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different in the survival mode. You can totally get lost if you get turned around a little bit. You don't know which direction you're facing. That happens in real life, too. I've been lost in the woods. It is frightening when you get turned around. You don't know which direction you came from, so it's a good idea to look for landmarks. Bring a compass, too, and know how to use it. All right, right over this ridge. And there's Jerry's house. Okay, let's sprint the rest of the way. I think we're clear. Uh oh, I don't see any smoke coming out of that house. Do you guys? Oh no. Oh no. Run it out, Will. Run! Oh no. Jerry. We're too late. We're too late. There's no smoke in the fireplace. Uh oh. Oh dear. Well, at least we beat the uh, the weather, because now the wind's picking up. Snow's starting to fall. We made it just in time. All right, put that gun down. Don't want to shoot anybody accidentally. Okay, in we go. Let's go see uh, Jerry. Hopefully he's still alive. Jerry? Oh, no, we're too late. Jeremiah? Well, let's give him a shot anyway. Might revive him. Oh! Oh! Ooh. Sheesh! Dog! Oh, shit! Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Oh, I thought you were dead. Take it easy. You're pretty banged up. You're probably a bit delirious, too. I just gave you a shot of some heavy antibiotics. Might feel funny for a while, but it'll help. And you're gonna need some time to recover. Time? <laughs> we don't have time. We need to get a message out. It's important. Message? You mean to your friend? Asking for medical help? Never mind that. Help me up so I can look at the radio. Let's see if the parts you brought back are any good. Up we go. That's a military shortwave, isn't it? Maybe. I know a bit about radios. 
That's not like any surplus I've ever seen. Ah, damn it! Well, the parts look fine. So, whatever's wrong with the radio goes deeper than that. What could it be? Ah, something to do with the power. <laughs> Fuses. Transformers, maybe. We have bigger problems to deal with first. That bear's out there, hunting us. He's a smart old bastard. He'll keep us from getting out, getting supplies, finding help. Eventually, he'll either get us or starve us out. I gotta lay down. Help me back to the bed. All right, you want me to tuck you in, too? What are you waiting for? Lie down. Uh, anyway, yeah, tell me more about the dam. The dam was pretty busted up, like you said. The place was cracked open by the quake years ago and never recovered. It was already half dead at the time. Meaning? The dam dates back to the 60s. Industrialists from the mainland wanted to use it to power a mining town he was planning to build. But the bottom fell out of the price of coal, and he had to abandon those plans. Some fool tried to get it running again in the 80s, but then the forest talkers got involved, and that was the end of it. Pretty sure the Quakes finished the job once and for all. Yeah, I'll say that place was a disaster. So, tell me more about these forest talkers. So, who are the forest talkers? Eco-terrorists. Activists, some call them. Depends on who you talk to, I guess. Why are they out here? Well, they've been active for years. They come and go. Mostly here to throw a wrench in the works for a variety of resource projects, mining, forestry mainly. They want Great Bear to remain a pristine wilderness. <laughs> you don't sound like you agree. Oh, I have no love for industry. But this is the way of the world. You have something they want. They take it. Nothing much you can do to stop it. Well, judging by what I saw in the dam, I'd say the forest talkers are still active. Well, that's good news for you. Keep your eyes open for supply caches they might have left behind. Well, I'm not choosing sides, Jerry, but I'll tell you what. Those forest talkers have uh, Mother Nature on their side, obviously. <laughs> Things are bad out there. So, uh, yeah, tell me about the surroundings. Can you tell me anything about where we are? Well, this whole area takes its name from Mystery Lake nearby. It's kind of a wilderness preserve. So you wouldn't know it from the logging trucks. Not much around there, apart from some lake cabins that'll be locked up for the season. You've already seen the dam. Railroad passes through the area. Trains come through once in a while. Fewer every year. The whole area's mostly dead, most of the year. You sound like you like it that way. Sure do. So, no other people living out here? You gotta understand. The collapse destroyed Great Bear. There's nothing here to stay for. You meet anyone out here? Chances are they're hiding from something. Or someone. And you? Why are you here? I have my reasons. Okay, I won't pry. But I will ask you about that bear. What's this unfinished business between you and the bear? Ah. <laughs> Me and the old bear. Every time we meet, we make a little trade. And what do you trade? <laughs> Each other's blood, mostly. Sounds like a losing proposition. Oh, well, I'm sure it will be. For one of us. 
Well, no offense, Jerry, but my money is on the bear. <laughs> and there's that box of ammo you guys were talking about that I missed in two, uh, two loose rounds, too. Hey, can you tell me about the woman? I'm assuming that's Astrid. <laughs> the main reason I'm out here is I'm looking for someone. Ha! <laughs> you won't find too many people out here. That's kind of the whole point. This is someone important to me. A woman. She may have passed through here a few days ago. She might have been injured. What makes you think she came through here? She passed through the tunnel leaving Milton, but then... I'm not sure. Well, the roads from Milton don't lead this way. Wherever she's headed, you'll have to cross the mountains to find her. Not an easy path, even for the most experienced outdoorsman. I'll do whatever it takes. Well, you won't get far with that bear on the prowl. What we need is to get my radio up and running, so we can find out what the hell is going on. Maybe someone out there has seen your friend. Dude. I have a sharp piece of metal. I ain't afraid of no bear. <laughs> I love these dialogue choices. It's like a woman. Tell me about the woman. Um, what can you tell me about this Perseverance Mills, Jerry? The woman I'm looking for. She might be on her way to a place called Perseverance Mills. You know it? Yeah. Shit, nothing town. North part of the island. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, I know it. We were on our way there, my passenger and I, when we crashed. I need to find a way to get there, or contact her, see if she's alright. You sure she's alive? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, well, normally I'd make some calls on the old shortwave. Whole area's been damn quiet since those lights in the sky. Even the wildlife's acting strange. I'd have an idea. Lights in the sky? What are you talking about? What do you mean the wildlife's acting strange? And that too. You live out here long enough, you get a sense for the patterns in nature. Right now, the patterns are broken. Critters aren't behaving the way they should. It's like they're spooked or something. No, not spooked changed somehow. Best way I can say it is things don't feel right. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I was just talking about that. The wolves around here are crazy. They don't hunt. They don't stalk. They just, like, attack. They charge you and that's it. They don't even think about it. Alright, anyway, uh, so what's your idea? You said you had an idea. What do you have in mind? Well, it's a long shot. But I may know how we can find out about your friend. I'm listening. This shortwave. I use it to keep an ear open for what's going on. So how do we get the radio working? There's no reason I can see why it shouldn't be working. Well, what about more parts? Or another radio? We might find another radio. But I think I have a better idea. Problem is... It's no use with the old bear out there. Your path to a working radio, and our survival, is through that bear. We have to find a way to deal with him first. Uh, come again? And how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> oh, yeah, well you know what? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, so we have to deal with the bear. But you're half dead, and rifle shots don't seem to do much. So... That's because the old bear, he's special. I've been hunting and trapping for years, and I've shot a lot of bears. But I've never encountered anything quite like him. A special bear like that needs special magic to bring him down. Uh, magic? <laughs> don't worry, I'm not delirious. I don't mean literal magic, but we need the old knowledge, the old ways. 
What do you have in mind? There's an old story. Local legend, maybe. About one of the original settlers of this place. Spence. Story goes something like this. Spence shows up and sets up his claim shanty with his young family in tow. For generations, the family had been traders in the Hudson's Bay Company. Old voyageur stock, they say. Hard people. Survivors. One day, a bear shows up and menaces the homestead. Spence takes a shot at the bear, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Bear wanders off, but Spence's wife, she takes a turn, slips into fever. For days, delirious, she screams about the bear. Local doctor can't do a thing for her, neither can the priest. Week later, a hired hand goes missing, and they find him, just a body, ravaged. Spence fears for his wife and kids. He's convinced some evil bear spirit is trying to kill them, revenge for some slight in the past, maybe, something in the family history. Spence gets some men together for a hunting party. They go out into the muskeg and track something big for days. Eventually corner it. Ah, it's a big son of a bitch. Biggest bear they'd ever seen. Man killer. Story goes, they empty their rifles into the bear and it just walks away. Like it's made of stone. They call it the demon bear after that. Wife's dying now. Spence believes the bear's evil spirit is killing her, eating her soul. He can't get anyone to join him on another hunting party. They know rifles don't work. So he forges a spear, like a boar spear, but bigger. From some old Hudson's Bay trapper's wisdom, apparently. He goes out into the muskeg, disappears for days, and then one morning, the wife's fever breaks, but nothing from Spence. Some men go out looking for him, and they find him, half dead, blood all over him, body torn almost in two. The bears work. The last thing he says is, Spear stole the bear's soul. My wife is now free. And then he's gone. So, did he kill the bear? Nobody knows. Never found a carcass. They buried Spence, took the spear back, and hung it over the mantelpiece in the Spence homestead. Never saw that bear, or any other, again. Years later, after the Spence family faded to obscurity, wealthy land baron bought the spear to hang in his hunting lodge. Just so he could tell that story, I imagine. So, do you believe it? The story of the demon bear and the spear stealing its soul? What? <laughs> no, of course not. I, I might spend all my time alone in the wilderness, but I'm not crazy. But the old stories sometimes have truths hidden in them. Spence might have been superstitious, but he had the right idea. Ten inches of cold, hard steel might do what a bullet can't. I'm convinced. A spear's the way to kill that bear. And you need to get Spence's bear-killing spear if we're going to survive the winter. The old hunting lodge is still there. A couple of days' journey south. Follow the tracks the other way, through the muskeg, and you'll find it. If the spear's there, get it. It might be our best hope. And the radio? You deal with the bear, and let me worry about the radio. <coughs> now, let me rest. Good luck out there. Watch out for our demon. Right. Whew. Man, what a story. The best defense. Here we go. Retrieve the legendary spear from the hunting lodge. That is a brand new item and a brand new quest in the Redux. And I am super excited about this. So, yeah, the whole time, that story. <laughs> I mean, I love the story. Um, and it's not a laughing matter because it's pretty tragic. But the whole time I was thinking about the story of the bald-headed bear in the movie uh, 
The Great Outdoors with John Candy <laughs> and um, Dan Aykroyd, right? Oh my gosh, that movie is so funny. There's a big bear and a legend about the bear. He's bald. <laughs> I won't spoil it for you. Go watch the movie. It's hilarious. Anyway, okay, we have a lot to do here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get ready for this trip. It's going to be a long trip, apparently. Got to go through the muskeg and all that jazz. I'm going to grab those bullets right now before I forget. The more bullets, the better, right? So I'm, I'm probably going to have to cut down this episode, probably a lot of the looting that I did at the dam. I'm going to hate to do it, but that story took up quite a bit of time um, even the, the initial uh, cutscenes that we we did here when we first walked in the door I mean I hate to do it but a lot of that loot is kind of pointless I didn't really get much other than the standard fare with the exception of the radio parts and of course the medical supplies that we got in the last episode so I think what we'll do right now is call it quits and I will get ready for the next trip we're gonna go after this spear can't wait to get it it's gonna be awesome and then we'll uh, we'll deal with the demon bear the bald-headed bear, whatever he's called. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. Excuse me, Jerry. Just uh, going to rifle through your house here. And, uh, yeah, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.